These are the wells that I call upon you to go to. And be stirred once more by those that were used in their generation until you're used by God in yours. Be stirred by the fact that God rewards. Be stirred by the fact that God uses you to make a difference with those that don't even believe in him. Now let's look at the four wells that we're going to find. Let's go back to the 19th verse. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen and said, the water is ours. So he named the well Essek, E-S-E-K, because they disputed with him. I want you to know that the actual translation of that word, as we look at the word Essek, is well of contention. For those of you that are taking notes, you can write down that Essek, E-S-E-K, actually means well of contention because there is this claim from the herdsmen of Gerar that the water belongs to them. I want you to, to understand this morning and catch this point that God's promises are not without a fight. And God's calling upon your life and God's purposes that he enacts in your life are not without adversity. There is this idea uh, among some that you can simply call every mountain that's before you to be gone. And it will leave. Some mountains will when you pray. Others will sit right there, but God will give you a way through or around. And I've seen this over and over again, because otherwise your faith will be dashed on the rocks of what you say God should do. And because you held a formula to him, you demanded that he do it exactly the way you wanted him to do it. Now, again, we learn from a mature walk in Christ as you go through life that there will be moments of miracles and praise God for the miracles and we will pray for them and believe for them. There are moments in which God gives you the strength to walk through a difficult time. Paul knew this because he had a thorn in the flesh that is some mysterious situation. And, and a lot of theologians believe this might have been some sort of oozing of the eyes and, and, and that make it very hard for him to see and, and that constantly made him hard to look at and that he cried out to God. We don't know whether that's it or not. Some theologians believe that. But he cried out for God to remove this thorn in the flesh from him. But he dealt with it as far as we know throughout his life. Now, God and his purposes in your life will have moments in which you say, God, why? Why am I struggling? Why is there strife? Some of you know what this is right now. You're struggling. There's strife. There's somebody who is trying to take away from you the joy of what God is doing in your life or has done in your life. And you're fighting with somebody right now. I want you to know that God understands that. And put a well in Genesis, the 26th chapter, to let you know that Isaac understood it well and that you can get through this. In John 16, 33, we see the scriptures. And the scriptures that it says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world, Jesus says. 1 Peter 4, 12 says, Do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. James 1, 2 through 3 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. I want you to see that Isaac has perseverance. Let's move on. We see that it was Essek, 21st verse. Then they dug another well. I want you to see that Isaac keeps digging wells. When he's turned away, when he has opposition, he just digs another one. He doesn't stop. He perseveres. And, and then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. Now, Sitna, actually being translated in that uh, 21st verse, means well of separation. Well of separation. It's represented by the enmity between Isaac and his herdsmen and Gerar and his herdsmen. We are strengthened in life, and I want you to catch this. We are strengthened in life from that which we separate from. And some of you this morning, God is calling upon you to separate from a relationship, from a place where you work, perhaps. This won't be everybody. Don't everybody leave your place of work <laughs> and get isolated. But some of you will find that by, separation, by separating from certain things or people, you will be strengthened. And this is what we find the meaning of this second uh, well that is spoken of in Scripture. Now let's look further. Let's read 21 on. 
Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also, so they named it Sitna, 22. He moved on from there and dug another well. He just keeps digging wells, perseveres. And no one quarreled over it. Wow, finally, you dig a well and you don't have opposition. You need to know that though you have felt like you have hit against wall after wall, there is a place where you will not hit a wall. And you're going to feel the blessing of the Lord and that that's it. And he named it Rehoboth, saying, now the Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. What he's saying is, I actually have a place that belongs to me. And he has left a place of contention. It's the third well, and the Philistines have given up. Because when you are consistent in your walk with God, there'll be a point where your enemy just finally says, enough. And steps back, and your consistency will rule the day. What we find with this well of faithfulness is that God will establish you. That means he will place you in your element. He will show you that though Abraham seemed to click well and fit well, and it all seemed to make sense for Abraham, and it all seems to make sense for Jacob, and it all seems to click in and make sense for Joseph, when I feel like I'm going through life trying to find markers, trying to find wells to give me a sense of who I am and what my place is in the world, that there is a moment in which God says, this is it. Put your roots down. I have established you. I will bless you here. You're going to find that you're not lost, that you're not the mistake in between chosen generations. Some of you need to know that. And Isaac was finding that here. You will, God will establish you, give you roots, and will make you fruitful. Now let's look to the 32nd and 33rd. That day Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, we have found water, 33rd verse. He called it Sheba. And to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. Now, Sheba is translated this way. The well of, and Sheba means sevenfold blessing. Seven, whenever you see that number, it is a number that means complete. And this means that Isaac has come to a point of this last well that we're going to talk about here this morning and has found himself to be at the place where his blessings are complete. His life now has roots. He now knows who he is, why he's there. He now knows the blessings of God are all over him. He has purpose in what he's done. He's been an example and he has a reputation for all of those that are around him. And he finds himself to have that complete blessing that is there. Now, this is the point that is made here. At this point, we're going to find that this well is opened up to others. There is a blessing that comes that goes beyond simply saying, God bless me. There is a blessing that comes when God so blesses you that people come to you or around you and they are blessed. Not to your glory, to God's. And so you find yourself working at a place that is blessed because you're there. Joseph knew it in the house of Potiphar. Everything about Potiphar was blessed because of Joseph. We found that Laban knew it because of Jacob. Everything about Laban was blessed because of Jacob. And so there's a moment at which the sevenfold or, or the complete blessing comes and people begin to dip from what you're 